I forgot to link the video. That is my fault. I'm going to do that now. Uh, I'm not sure when you're going to be able to hear me, but I'm just going to share the link to everyone because I forgot to do that. In my infinite wisdom, I forgot to do that. Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen, and I will be with you momentarily. Uh, just uh, uh, Hold on. Ah. Do, 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 do. Sorry, it's taking a sec. Just sorting this out. And then I will be right with you. Also, yeah, if anyone joins to this, just know I am going to start in a moment. I've just uh, forgot to send the links out. So I'm going to do that really quick. How is everybody doing whilst I'm being woefully unprepared? I apologise. Hey, Tharys. Hello. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? I hope everyone's doing okay on this. Uh, it's Monday evening. I have to check. Because um, I'm terrible at remembering what the days of the week are. So yeah, we've got some um, some new images, some uh, new interviews. And but yeah, just a little bit more on what, you know, was going on yesterday, really. So uh, yeah, sit back. It's going to be a bit of a chill stream. We're going to be talking more about uh, the centenary and just, you know, stuff in general. I put new video instead of live now. Oh, well, you get the idea. Same thing. Hey from, hey from Sin City. Hey. Hello. I'm doing pretty good. How is everybody doing? Uh, hello to, um, yes, we got new photos. Um, hello to Rosa Larkin, Doctor Who, Roblox, Pam, Cyberkid, Cameron Jefferson, the Nordic Doctor, Harvey, uh, Cameron, Double T Bat, uh, Matteo, Jake Dillow. How are you guys doing? Everyone, like the stream if you can. It uh, helps out, you know, just with the algorithm and such. So uh, that's always appreciated. Wait, did you say new photos? Yes, there are indeed new photos that have been posted. Um, from various places, it has to be said, because um, I'm, I'm going to go over them now, but, like, they haven't been, a lot of them haven't been, like, officially dropped, as in, like, the Twitter accounts haven't posted them, but they do exist. Um, so, I pull it, you know, it, it makes sense if you haven't seen them. Who you think it's dirty regenerated into? I, I'm, like, 99.999% sure it's going to be Tenant by the end. Uh, what's your subscribers at now? I think it's just over um, 16,000, which yeah, had stayed there, which is nice. But if you are new, feel free to subscribe, uh, like if you're enjoying, and uh, Super Chats are also available. But not an essential, but they do help out the channel immensely. Um, you know, it's it's been financially hard times for everyone, but you know, any support does help out. Uh, and is greatly appreciated. But yeah, let's get into some images, shall we? Um, bu -bu 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 all right, so um, I actually, before we do, I just want to say, I'm not going to name any specifics because, um, you know, I don't want to drag the tone down of the stream, but uh, I just want to say very quickly before we um, before we start, really, like, I just want to say, like, there's been a lot of stuff going on in, like, the fandom in general of recent, like, on social media and stuff. That's just been a bit grim, and I was kind of expecting the fan base to become a little bit... Um, sort of heated in the next few days in the wake of like this big final episode it kind of happens most of the time when an episode comes out but particularly with the monumental nature of this episode like i was kind of expecting the fan base to be a little bit um hectic you know with people from all different like viewpoints and stuff with that having been said though i'm not really um uh i, I wasn't i i don't think anyone could have quite expected just what's been going on over the last couple of days Again, I don't really want to get into the specifics, but I just want to say the fan base really needs to chill out. Like, just chill out. You know what I mean? Like, chill. Like, some people at the moment, and again, I don't want to name any names, but they are just saying the most horrible stuff and acting all self-righteous about it. And it's just a bit grim, really. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to get that out the way. Um Because, honestly, it's just a little... You're, you guys are chill. I don't really mean you guys. Uh, I just mean, like, some people on Twitter and stuff and other social medias, people just need to, like, take it easy, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, um, bottom of the bottom line, uh, it's, it's a TV show. If you want any more context, um, just go on my Twitter account, at TheriesYT. I'll give a bit more over there. Um, I'm, I, if you go on the Twitter account, you can see a bit more about what I'm talking about, but 
I don't want to. I don't want to drag the tone of the stream down too much. I don't want to get bogged down in it. But I just think some people need to need to take a step back and really reevaluate the way they're approaching others and the way they speak to others online. Um, and that's as far as I want to talk about that just now. Uh, I just thought there was an important thing to address. But yeah, anyway, getting into fun stuff. So we've had some numerous uh, social media images for Power of the Doctor. Um, and I'm getting these mostly from Tyler Central, who collated them, but uh, they've been posted in numerous places, including James Pardon, who's like the official, um, I guess he's like the official photographer for a lot of this stuff, um, his social medias, um, as well as, I'm going to tell you the weird origin of one of these images in just a sec. Obviously, the image that I've got actually in the thumbnail is new. But uh, yeah, we've got these three images. The first one uh, depicts 13 looking rather perturbed in her orange spacesuit. I still wager that the orange spacesuit stuff occurs relatively close to the beginning. So perhaps this is after, perhaps this is my speculation, should they encounter perhaps the Cybermasters on the bullet train and the Doctor sees this and thinks of the sign that time gave them back in the Vanquishers and is like, oh, okay, this is, you know, kind of like, kind of like when Tom Baker in the Gopolis sees the Watcher he sort of knows his time is coming to an end sort of thing. Again, wholly my speculation on that front, but that's what I'm reckoning this could allude to. I could be totally wrong and totally off base with that, but that is just my speculation as of right now. We also have this image, which is the one used in the thumbnail, which is another, basically a similar picture to one that was in Doctor Who magazine, only in that one, she was crouched down and with her goggles on. This appears to be the same ship that Vinda was on in the images in Doctor Who magazine, which we actually have high-res versions of those photos coming up in just a sec. Uh, you can see she's trying to fix something. I'm going to guess again that this... I, I'm going to guess that this is Vinda's ship. That's my guess. That this is the ship of... Um, Vinder that we see in the trailer as well. And then finally we get this shot, uh, the last shot of the 13th Doctor facing the Daleks within the uh, Centenary Special, within Power of the Doctor. I, it's weird how I still call it the Centenary Special, even after all this time. I think it's just because that's what we knew it as for so long. But yeah, this one's quite cool. It's nice seeing them back with their plunges properly, I must say. I have missed them. I don't really get what the point of the claw was. We never really saw it do anything. Um, and with the, the default gun. Although, and even though it's kind of silly in the episode, I do quite like the look of the minigun, even though, you know, it misses virtually every shot that it attempts to make. But yeah, um, a nice shot. Again, I'm going to assume this is in the volcano scene. So I'm going to guess 13 lands in this volcano, sees the Daleks are up to something there. The Daleks obviously confront her. Maybe this is where she meets Ace as well. Maybe the Doctor gets into a bit of trouble with the Daleks and Ace is forced to use her baseball bat to, um, you know, aid the Doctor in that situation. Kind of similarly to, I guess, is it Stone Earth? Where you have um, Wilf and uh, Sylvia about to get exterminated and Rose comes from behind and shoots them. Um, it could be quite similar to that, possibly. That's just, again, my guess. But we do see in the Doctor Who magazine images uh, Ace in these caves too. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is where 13 and Ace meet either there or in the... To be fair, it could also be in the unit scenes as well um, where we see... Uh, what you call it? In Doctor Who magazine, um, Ace and Tegan entering units together and talking to the 13th Doctor. It could also be there. But yeah. So those are the four new ones. We also have um, high quality versions of a lot of the images seen in Doctor Who magazine that have been posted to BBC America. Obviously there's this one of the TARDIS uh, landing uh, in these tunnels. And does it just, is it just me or does the TARDIS look taller here? Or am I just, are my eyes going funny or is it just, does it look taller to you? Or is it just me? What's the theory? Is just order, uh, just order some pizza. Um, yeah, not, not too much. I'm just streaming than that. Um, after Dan says he wants to leave, uh, which bit, which bit do you mean? It looks a bit tall. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know that, uh, Jody and Mandip are particularly tall, but it looks taller than usual. I don't know whether that's just me. Um, we also got, uh, this one, which again, 
I think I've spoken about it before, but obviously this is our first like high res officially released uh, picture of it, which seems to depict dropping them off. Again, I think this might be a bit of a misdirect actually, because I think a lot of people, I think that what they want you to think is that this is final scene stuff with the with Yaz and Dan getting dropped off. What I think this could be is Dan getting dropped off early on, saying, you know, look, that early bit with the bullet train was a bit too much for me. I'm going to head off, you know, with, da with Diane for a bit, maybe meet up with Graham whilst uh, 13 and Yaz go and investigate some other stuff. That's what I think this is. I don't think this is the final scene. Although the other image that we looked at yesterday that was f photographed um, in July... I think that could very well be because that's in a different location. The one where it's thirteen looking out that window, all perturbed, all uh, the uh, TARDIS door, all perturbed. Sorry, and you can sort of um, that's covered in yesterday's stream. So yeah, I don't think this is the final one of the final scenes. I think this is again kind of a slight misdirect in that way. And then yeah, we get a proper good quality vision of Ace in the sort of lava uh, excavation area. You can see the lava there see the Daleks in the background. So yeah, my theory is maybe Ace helps out, maybe Ace first encounters the Doctor in these volcanoes as she's investigating them, or alternatively just helps her get out of a scrape um, when, they've, when they've both gone off to do separate investigations. I could picture a school reunion type scene where they're both on the job and discover each other through that. Um, is there another one? And then yeah, so this is the ship that I was saying in the other image, it looks like 13 is trying to repair the one that Vind is on. Let me get that image up again. Um, you can sort of see very similar color-wise and sort of um, style-wise. Because I don't think it's the bullet train. Because the bullet train, from what we've seen, is sort of very pristine looking and very um, clean. Obviously, it could be a different part of the bullet train, I guess. But I think it's more likely that this is Vinda's ship, just judging by like how similar it looks. Um, in both of these shots, obviously this shot isn't quite as good quality. I actually had to um, I had to slightly upscale the the image that we have here for the thumbnail. But yeah, um, some interesting shots nonetheless. It's 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 nice now that we're actually you know getting a bunch of shots, and I think James Pardon, um, who who does a lot of these shots, teased on Twitter earlier if I can find it that there would be more coming in the very near future. So yeah. Also, there's 150 of you in here. If you could do me a favor, if you are new to the stream, feel free to like the stream if you're enjoying it. Also, if you are just here, uh, make sure you're subscribed uh, so you don't miss any Doctor Who news updates. I will be doing more normal videos in the future. It's just that live streams are a very quick and convenient way for me to cover all the latest stuff in one go. Uh, but yes, if you are new, feel free to subscribe. Uh, but yes, we also have this, which is actually... Um, an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald, uh, which covers Jodie Whittaker's exit as well. Um, so yeah, they're doing, it's every, everywhere is getting an interview, it seems. It's really interesting how I was, that's what I was saying, with this production team, you'll go from having basically nothing um, uh, for like weeks, and then all of a sudden they'll just drop uh, like everything on you at once. Uh, oh, just caught you in a live. What did I miss? Uh, we've just been going over the new, a uh, couple of the new promo images that have been released today. Um, we also uh, are just about to read an article uh, about the episode itself that I found. Um, 16k twice, yeah. Thanks for the update and picks. No worries. I like the daily streams. You better keep doing them even when there's no news. Yeah, I mean, sometimes there hasn't been as much news, to be fair. You should email Jody for an interview. I mean, I wouldn't say no, but I, I feel like you should probably go for more professional outlets, to be honest. Um, but it would be an interesting interview. I don't even know how I would go about emailing, to be fair, although that would be fun. The, the 11 calendar picture is like, yes, that's my favourite month. I might not change it, you know, after uh, when, when it comes to uh, November, I might just leave it with him on. A lot of random theories, chat. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about the interview itself, shall we? And yeah, make sure you're subscribed if you are indeed new, and a like if you're enjoying the content. It's always appreciated. But yes, uh, we have this. So, um, 
Saying goodbye is hard. Jodie Whittaker's time in the TARDIS ends. Uh, this is by Michael Idan Idato. Uh, Saying goodbye is tough. Production on the final episode of Doctor Who featuring actress Jodie Whittaker wrapped up production a year ago this week. And yet, a year later, the topic of walking away from the role of the iconic Time Lord is complicated. You think, after having a year to get my head around it, I'd be less teary. I'm still very emotional about it. Wick says, half of the problem is your phone does that thing where it sends you memories, and last night suddenly all these photos from season one started pinging on my phone. I'm quite well known as an on-the-brink emotional person anyway. I can kind of tap into that, any extreme, quite quickly, Whitaker adds. But with this episode, I knew when we started it was brilliant. It was so much fun, and it's hard, and it's challenging, and I'm surrounded by the most amazing people, the crew, uh, the family you create when you're on set. Saying goodbye to Doctor Who uh, shouldn't be such a big deal. Since the show's premiere in uh, 1963, no less than 13 actors, including Whitaker, have played the primary incarnations of the character. Glad they glad they specified primary, because uh, otherwise I knew I knew a bunch of people were gonna in the comments like, what about, what about John Hurt? What about Joe Warren? What about the more obvious doctors? Uh, um, as well as multitude of glimpses of brief encounters with other incarnations. Yep, John Hurt, um, Michael Jason and even Peter Cushing. It's weird how they choose Michael J. Stutter and not Joe Martin, but anyway. Uh, the final words of David Tanner's Doctor, one of the few uh, permitted a script line which reflected the complexity of leaving a cultural institution. Doctor Who sum it up, really. I don't want to go, he said. I mean, Doctor I Let You Go kind of does a similar thing, but I'll, I'll grant you that, you know, I Don't Want to Go is definitely the more iconic of the two. Uh, indeed, if speculation bears out, Tanner's Doctor may return more on that later. By the end of a, a year uh, filming, obviously, um, goodbye is a weird thing to say because most people do jobs for 40 years, which says you don't film for that long in television unless you really are in a kind of long running soap. So a year together is a long time. Top of the list of the things Whitaker will not miss, the line learning. It's brilliant because it's hard. I think my short term memory has kind of has had kind of a masterclass. But every night after a 12-hour shift uh, filming day or whatever, you go home and you've got seven new pages to learn, and I won't miss that. Through the history of Doctor Who, it's long and complex. Uh, it takes um, time to fully understand each Doctor in his or her context. Ewan McGregor said it recently that it had been two decades for him to fully understand the Star Wars prequels, had a fan base that was quite distinct from the original trilogy. Younger fans to whom he was the definitive Obi-Wan Kenobi, rather than Sir Alec Guinness the actor he had essentially replaced. Whittaker had her moment of realisation while into filming of her first season, which had, she recalls, largely taken place in a remote bubble. We're all on set, we've moved to Cardiff, you're seeing things, uh, you're seeing the same people every day and you don't reach your head above the water at all, she says. Then we went to San Diego Comic Con for the announcement of the season and I found, it, uh, I found that overwhelming in a positive way. When you see someone dressed up in your costume, no matter what age, uh, where they're from, whatever their background, it's just incredibly emotional because you realise that this show is so much bigger than you could ever imagine because it's so cross-generational, Whitaker says. It doesn't have a necessarily typical demographic. There are Hoovians, Doctor Who fans everywhere, and it's so unexpected, and it's wonderful. Uh, Whitaker's final episode, Power of the Doctor, is the third of three specials produced this year, written by Chris Chibnall. It dives deeply into the show's canon, featuring not just the return of the Daleks, Cybermen, and Doctor's long-standing nemesis, the Master, but also two companions uh, from the classic show, Tegan and Janet Fielding, who travelled with the fifth Doctor, Peter Davison, and so, well, also Tom Baker, briefly, but... And Ace of the Elder... See, I only say that, you know, fans are going to call it out because I am that person. I am that person who will say, well, it's also that. What is your opinion on K9 returning? I mean, here's the thing about that. The events of um, uh, Farewell Sarah Jane have been somewhat um, retconned in terms of, um, you know, their official continuity. Because I know in, in uh, Farewell Sarah Jane, she gets K-9, right? And that's kind of, um, uh, that's kind of led to a lot of speculation that Ace would bring K-9 in the centenary. And the thing about that is, is that it's kind of been confirmed through the interviews that we covered yesterday that that continuity won't necessarily be followed because it's implied that Tegan has had multiple marriages since and divorces since her time with the Doctor, kind of implying that the Tegan and Nissa ship that was propagated by um, or suggested by uh, the Farewell Sarah Jane uh, audio lockdown 
is not, is no longer canon, which is, you know, that's an unfortunate thing, but that also kind of implies that, you know, perhaps Ace doesn't have K9 anymore, but yeah. Hey, up, Therese, my man, how you doing? I'm doing good. Therese, no, you're not on famous birthdays yet. I wouldn't expect to be, to be honest. Um, I don't think I'm that, <laughs> don't think I'm that important, frankly. Uh, but it's sweet of you to get, to go looking, I guess. Campaign for them to put me on it. I want to be one of the more famous people in Cardiff, even though I know that's not going to happen, because, um, you know, half of Doctor Who gets filmed here. Uh, <laughs> these days. My birthday's on Wednesday. Well, happy birthday to you for Wednesday. Um, the Discord strip, the Discord script has, uh, I, I said this in a previous stream, it is still going to happen, but I'm delaying it to December because I'm just so busy with centenary content right now. But yeah, I'm going to finish off this interview and then there's one more thing I want to show and then there's also something I want to make reference to that's going to be quite interesting. So we got some stuff planned. So yeah, stick around. Um, also, feel free to like if uh, you haven't already. There's 45 likes currently. There's 150. I feel like we could get to 100 likes if I don't hit my desk um, next Wednesday. But thank you. You're, oh, sorry. I got that wrong. But happy birthday to you for next Wednesday. Um, but yes, anyway. Uh, let's finish up this article. So... Such moments when the show's modern iteration and its classic era connect are particularly poignant with success. They are also rare, the most notable return of Sarah Jane Smith companion to the fourth Doctor Tom Baker in the 70s during the David Tennant era in 2006. Whitaker says she was almost overwhelmed by the scene she filmed with Fielding and Aldred, uh, and she says she found herself unexpectedly needing their approval. You're welcoming them in, but it's more like, do you accept me, Whitaker says. I was just really needy for acceptance, I think. Uh, while finer plot details of the special are not known, what is clear is that it will include the regeneration scene in which Whitaker is transformed into the next incarnation of the Doctor. That's where things get a little, to quote Tanner's Doctor, wibbly wobbly timey wimey. It has been confirmed that the next Doctor will be played by actor Shuti Gatwe, but there's speculation that uh, Whitaker's regeneration might in fact be a degeneration, allowing a brief return for Tanner's Doctor, at least for the show's 60th anniversary in 2023, which would then introduce. Um, uh, would then set the stage nicely to introduce Gatwick. None of that, of course, is anything that Whitaker could offer commentary on, nor would she. But she has confessed that there are periodically informal handover discussions between doctors. In Whitaker's case, Chibnall had asked Tennant, yeah, yeah, I, I, we've, we've heard this story. I don't think there's much more new information. Um, um, there's a couple of bits. Yeah, like, she basically just says what she said before about Shooty, about, you know, do your own thing with it. And then there's also um, the stuff about uh, the, the casting decision. Uh, Whitaker's, uh, the backlash against Whitaker's casting, such as it was, was totally expected, Whitaker says. I think often the angriest voice is the loudest, but it's not necessarily the majority. So weirdly, you hear a lot of negative when it might not even be the overriding banner or sentiment that's been projected out there. But I expected, which is bleak in itself, but I suppose it was a fine line of finding it funny because I was playing an alien. Um, but yes, so yeah, that's the interview. Um, yeah, there's obviously if you want to read the rest, I'll uh, feel free to go check out the Sid the Sydney Morning Herald. What a random, what a random publication. But yeah, there you go. There's the interview. Um, yeah, I also want to point out um, the first known sighting of the image I showed you earlier is actually from Yahoo Movies. Um, a Yahoo Movies article of all things, uh, discussing why each doctor left the role. These things just seem to be in, like, the most random of places. Um, although, BBC, you know, if you want to give me, you know, an exclusive image, uh, feel free, you know, but my, my emails, my emails are open. No, I'm, I'm joking, of course. Um... Can't wait for the new TARDIS interior and console. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah, we move these goated. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so there's another thing I wanted to, to highlight, um, which I think is interesting. I also um, neglected to mention yesterday, which uh, William, who actually did a video on this, uh, so I'll only cover it briefly, but um, it does reveal some interesting things. I believe it was the Metro 
who recently interviewed Chris Chibnall. Uh, hold on, let me find that. I'm a bit late to this party, but I felt like I might as well discuss it. Oh, they've realized I've got an ad blocker on. Ah, uh, they're clever. We've been busted, fellas. The Metro is too smart. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to turn it off just to read this article. Uh, Dr. Yusurana teases... Dr. Yusurana teases regeneration details, so many Easter eggs, and a tearful goodbye to Jodie Whittaker. Dr. Yusurana Chris Chibnall has teased more details about Jodie Whittaker's regeneration, promising so many Easter eggs and a tearful goodbye to our 13th Doctor. The upcoming special, titled Power of the Doctor, will uh, see Jodie step down as the 13th Doctor with Shuti Galwa set to take over the TARDIS. Chatting to the Metro UK about the emotional uh, feature-length episode, Chris teased that the journey's regeneration will look very different to past Doctors. It is very different. It is very visually different, he revealed. Uh, where it takes place is different. I think I can say without being too much of a spoiler, it definitely feels different. And it's not going to take place in the same place as previous regeneration. So yeah, this is what we sort of talked about before, about, um, I think I mentioned this quote maybe in yesterday's stream, but I wasn't sure the... Um, the origins of, but yeah, so it's visually different is interesting. I, I think it's still going to be the orange exploding stuff. I mean, we've kind of seen that in, in Power of the Doctor anyway, but the idea of something, uh, the idea of a regeneration not taking place within the TARDIS is actually one I'm all for. Um, all of the other Doctors of New Who, Christopher Eccleston, David Tennant, Matt Smith and Big Pally have regenerated in the TARDIS. There are big surprises still to come, big, big surprises. Chris added to the highly anticipated episode. There are so many Easter eggs in there for people who've been watching the show for years. There are things for really, really hardcore fans and even the more casual viewers. There's lots to get your teeth into. It's a huge, epic, fast rollercoaster ride of an episode he went on. It's probably the biggest episode of Doctor Who we've ever made. Uh, it features the return of Tegan Nace from the classic series Doctor Who, Janet Fielding and Sophie Aldred, who are phenomenal. It has an evil trio of monsters, the Daleks, Cybermen and Master, played by Sasha Dewan. And Sasha playing the Master, you've never seen him before in New Who. It goes all across time and space. It's connecting the past, present, and future of Doctor Who. Oh, voice crack. Future of Doctor Who. It's very exciting. It's funny. And tears will be shed at the end of the 13th Doctor. As always, some stellar fan theories floating about, including the idea, instead of regenerating straight into Shusi, Jodie's Doctor will regenerate into David Tennant's 10th Doctor, or a version of him, to set up the 60th anniversary next year. Chris responded, I haven't seen that, but it's made me laugh. There's fan theories on everything. I seem to remember there was a fan theory of Graham that would turn out to be the Doctor, that Bradley Walsh was a secret Doctor in disguise. I remember that one. I remember that. Um, but what I will say about this is that I've seen some people sort of act as though this is confirmation towards the idea that the um, Doctor will not, in fact, regenerate into David Tennant. And like, come on, these guys can lie. You know what I mean? We know that he's seen the ending of the episode from... I think the, the BBC press release yesterday, I think he mentions it. Um, and he says it's it's a very exciting, you know, cliffhanger. So I still, I still have my money on it. Um, you know, he, he's not going to reveal anything anyway. Ultimately, though, Chris said Power of the Doctor will be a celebration of all things who, even if we do end up sobbing at the end. It was a great way to, to go out because it's so much fun and it starts at 100 miles per hour. And it doesn't seem to uh, let up for the whole 90 minutes. He reflected, adding that viewers will want to do it all over again. The brilliant thing about Doctor Who is the great design of it. There's this incredible emotional swell as you say goodbye to a Doctor, and instantly you get the thrill of the next Doctor. It's so great, he explained. The unique thing about this show, and the unique thing about these moments, is there's not many of them across the years. It's incredible to say goodbye to a beloved character, to an extraordinary Doctor in Jodie Whittaker, and it's a very tearful goodbye, but then there's great excitement about what comes as well. It's a very celebratory episode. It's very celebratory of Jodie as a Doctor, of Doctor Who, of the show, and its place in the BBC. Tissues at the ready, gang. There we are. So that's that interview. So yeah, another Chris Chibnall, Chib Chibity, Chib Chibity, Chib Chib to re interview, which is very interesting. I hope she doesn't regenerate the town. I'm curious as to why. I am curious. I made it to a live. Hi, Therese. Hello, Malak. How are you? I am very curious because I've heard I've heard some reasonings about how it's a step backwards, and I get it, but realistically, it makes the most sense. I really enjoy all the streams, Therese. Thank you, Mark Smith. Appreciate that. Uh, it almost certainly is a gold fire regen, but I would love a new effect. I agree. I'd like... You know what I'd like? I'd like them to bring back 
the either the lightning from the movie or the spinny hats on or like them just them lying on the floor you know a different position would be nice uh, rather than the you know um but yes there's also something else i want to talk about because um obviously with last night's stream we had the press release talking about uh, where dan mentions the companion support group there's also mentions of, obviously we know about uh, Rasputin as well. So as a result of this fact, a sort of Gallifrey base leak from eons ago um, has been making the rounds again. Um, and I'm going to answer that question about which is your favourite regeneration in just a sec. But before I do, I want to talk about this. So, um, yeah, so this is a basically a, a Gallifrey base uh, leak that came out a while ago and i want to bring it up because it brings up some interesting possibilities uh not only for the future but also just i think it kind of is quite scary in some of its um accuracy uh so dan leaves the tardis early on but ends up joining a companion support group that's been confirmed in uh john bishop's segment of the bbc press release he mentions that ace and t can have the biggest role but we will get cam cameos from the others as well all the Earth Companions who are, support, uh, are supposed to be alive make a little appearance. Joe Grant, Polly, Mel, Ian Chesterton even gets a line. Something happens to Yaz where she keeps experiencing the Doctor throughout her lifetime, but not quite exactly right. Something like it. Uh, meeting Davison, McCoy, um, Colin Baker and McGann. No, Tom Baker. Uh, it's all there for no good reason, apparently. The Fob Watch is never addressed again. I think I posted about that before. So yeah, this was something that was sort of being doing the flirting about. Admittedly, could be guesses, but the idea that they, they predicted a specific companion support group, which is exactly how Dan uh, actor John Bishop refers to it, is an interesting thing. So did this leak basically predict the, the centenary? Possibly. So is the Graham the Doctor thing the reason why people in the show thought Graham was the Doctor? Basically, what it what that whole thing stemmed from was, um, if I remember correctly, it was based on a, a line delivery from John Bishop in the Time of Children, where he said, "I'm the doc. I'm the I'm the most normal bloke you're ever gonna meet." But he said it almost sounds like he's about to say, "I'm the Doctor," so people were like, "Wait, is he the Doctor?" And I obviously it was very little evidence, but you got to remember at that time, you know, just five episodes prior, we just had the announcement, or I guess uh, the reveal in Fugitive of the Jadoon of Joe Martin's Doctor. So everyone was kind of thinking, well, you know, any character could be the Doctor now. No one's safe. Uh, but yes, uh, that's kind of the reason why. Did John Bishop confirm he was leaving early uh, or that there was a companion support group? He confirmed that there would be a companion support group. I think he also... Like, the way he speaks kind of implies that he's, like, sort of in it early, I think. I did cover that article yesterday, so feel free to go back and uh, have a look at that if I, if I miss anything. And if I make this into a clip, I'll probably play a bit from that. Uh, every Doctor Who to have a small scene upon their regeneration, Capaldi or his attack eyebrows, famously had two. Yes, um, in terms of my favourite regeneration, story-wise, it's Time of the Doctor. I also just really like that scene at the end as well. In terms of an actual effect, I'm not sure, you know. Um, uh, ooh. I've always had a slight fondness for the, the McGann Lightning. I think there's just something so mysterious about it. But I, I do really love the War Games um, when the, the Time Lord sentenced him uh, to uh, you know exile on Earth and force him to change. I think that one's one of the most haunting. So I, that might be one of my favourites in terms of the regeneration alone. Favourite season in New Who? Series 5. Um, who is the fourth Doctor? Um, an incarnation of the Doctor from Doctor Who. Um, worst effect is three into four. Yeah, it's just kind of a... Well, then again, no, I would say... I'd say that six into seven is worse because he's not there. Um, but, yeah, three to four is one of the more dull because it is just kind of a fade. Uh, doing well, dig your stuff, I always check it out. How do you feel about the prospect of never hearing about the Fob Watch again? That's an interesting point as well, yeah. Because um, they mentioned that. Honestly, I'm not too surprised. Because frankly, in terms of this episode, there's already so much going on in it outside of what already exists within the era that I kind of wasn't expecting a major... 
uh, acknowledgement of the, the the Timeless Child anyway. So I'm not too surprised. I will say I'm not a huge fan of that whole arc in general. I will say, however, if it doesn't get some sort of resolution, that is going to feel incredibly... Um, I think I think that's going to uh, damage... Um, Uh, what you call it? Like, I think that's going to damage rewatches somewhat. But yeah, um, that's my thoughts on it. It should really get an answer, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not like sort of. Uh, if that TV, if that rumor is true, we might say eight on TV on Sunday. I don't know how to cope, but also they're wasting a little small cameo. Uh, hello, Therese, Hello. Yeah, I mean the whole thing with the um the that the one bit that, about that uh, rumor that I'm least confident in is the whole idea of her of Yaz meeting different versions of the Doctor. I think what would be more likely in my head is that Jodie would sort of cycle through them when she's being experimented on by the Doctor. But yeah, in that case, it literally would just be a blink and you'd miss it cameo type deal. Would love to see more Eccleston on the TV show, personally. I would too, but the chances of us getting it at this point are, unfortunately, extraordinarily low, given um, his, well, stated reasons. Um, when's the video with I'm Alex coming? To be honest, I, I've sort of, I've messaged him a few times, but um, I have been aired. So it's basically whenever he says he wants to do it, that's, you know, I thought him. So maybe, maybe give him a little reminder. I, obviously, you know, don't <laughs> harass the guy or anything. Um, but yeah, like, it's basically, I just kind of got ghosted for a while, but I, I still want to do it, I'm just waiting on him, basically. Uh, he's probably just busy. <laughs> Favourite Dalek line? Individual line? Um, I think you would make a good Dalek, it's just a really, like, well done line in the context of the story. Um, in terms of their actual... Dialogue, I mean, there's a new number of ones. I, I love the one in the Daleks in Manhattan two-parter, where it's like, um, you told us to imagine, you taught us to imagine, so we imagined your irrelevance. It's like, I love that line. They're quite sassy in, in that story in general. I, I spoke in a previous stream about how much I loved the scene where two of the cult Scaro wait for the pig slaves to leave before they chat shit about um about Dalek sec. I think that's one of my favourite like moments. Uh, I also like I'm not sure which classic story it's in now, but I always use the gif of it. It's um it's the Dalek saying you make your incompetence sound like an achievement. Um You would make a good Dalek eventually, yeah. Well, it was said that the Doctor was being erased. Maybe somehow that causes the glitches. That means literally 13 turns into old incarnations for a line or two. That's what I think it'll be, yeah. That's basically where my money is. Uh, what would be the worst person to get cast in Doctor in the future for me? It'd be Ricky Gervais. So, yeah, I mean, I'd probably say, like, Lawrence Fox, because Paul McGann made a joke about that at, like, a con. And it was a joke, you know, he wasn't seriously advocating for it before anyone says it. But, yeah, someone like that. Would you care for some tea as an iconic line, to be fair? as well. Yeah, I don't mind much, but a minor resolution would be nice. Flashback, just to mention. I will say, the, th the scene in the Vanquishers really implies that it'll be open, so if she doesn't open it, I am going to be a bit like, why did you have that line in there where it's like, don't show me this unless I really need it. It's like, okay. Why was that line if there if she doesn't open it? But yeah. So there are no mini episodes. What's that in reference to? Sorry. Uh, did you know that the kid in Young Dracula, Garen Howell, is in Doctor Magazine this month? Is he? What's he in Doctor Magazine for? I haven't... I sort of skimmed Doctor Magazine for, like, the big news stuff. But, yeah. Uh, someone can tell me what, what he's in there for. Feel free. Do you think the Master will steal the Fob Watch? Possibly? Yeah. Possibly. Uh, Dalek sized version of garlic bread or garlic bread sized version of a Dalek. Well, I want Dalek sized garlic bread because then you can eat it. It'd be great. Best Dalek line, you make your accomplices out like an achievement. Yeah, I mentioned that one earlier. I don't, I don't know how far behind the chat is, to be fair, but I already did that one, Atomoise. Will there be a Christmas special? We don't know. 
at this stage, I, even though Lisa and Azimba said one's not happening, I've still got a funny feeling we might just have a bit of Christmas Miracle on our hands. I, I don't really have much, you know, in the way of, like, an official basis for that. But, um, yeah, I just, I have a funny feeling, you know? I just have a feeling. Terry's reference to Dolly's Multiplied Rare, Terry's Base Moment. You mean common Terry's Base Moment? Oh yeah, so basically I reached out to um, I'm Alex to do a podcast collaboration because I noticed when Russell Z Davis was announced, which uh, sort of dates how long ago this was in the works, um, I was like, oh, you like Doctor Who? Do you want to like come on and discuss it? Because I like do like a Doctor Who podcast and stuff. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sounds great. And um, it just sort of kept getting delayed and it never really happened. But um, hopefully it does one day. Um, I'm not going to believe there's no Christmas special until Christmas Day. I mean, look, if there is one, we're going to know, I reckon we'd know on the 23rd, realistically. In your opinion, what's your least favourite and most favourite Doctor? Probably, probably 13th for least favourite, which doesn't, which I don't love saying, but it kind of just is how I feel, to be honest. Favourite is probably Smith, um, although I love Sylvester McCoy and David Tennant, they're all, they're all up there too, um. Christmas special would be great, a nice gift. I really hope it happens, but I, I'm not, you know, at this point, I'm not holding my breath. There was also, um, just to, um, uh, I forgot to mention these, actually. There was also some Instagram pictures on, funnily enough, Instagram of all places. Um, this one's from Thaddea Graham, uh, saying, fare thee well, 13. So Thaddea Graham, I believe, played as your, I hope I'm right. Um, and there you can see Jodie posing for the camera. And there was also, um, Ian Flowers seventy four, um, who I believe is um, one of the costume designers, and he helped design the look for Tegan apparently. So that's really cool. And yeah, I just wanted to highlight those two things because I had them in my lineup, and I forgot to mention them. So there we go. <laughs> Thaddea played Belle. Yes, sorry, I get confused. Who was your? Yeah, no, I, I keep getting confused. That Thaddea was Belle. Yeah, you are right. I am a fool. I'm a fool and a scoundrel, and I, I deserve uh, I deserve punishment of some variety. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Yeah, Stadia was bad. Um. Let me just check, see what else is going on on, on the old Doctor Who verse. Not much uh, else, it seems. Obviously, there's, there's, there's a lot of um, bits that we've already read in previous videos, so I don't want to go over stuff too much. Yes, yeah, so I want to say as well, this was the setup I was talking about in the last stream, actually. Uh, thank you to Ollie Link later for um, showing this because yeah, this was the image we saw back in July, and this seems to be the result of that shot. Uh, the costume lines up and everything. I would say this is still near the end. Um, but yeah, now at this point, you know we're what we're what like six days away. Like it's it's really just kind of a, a waiting game now. Percent on it being ten, in, in your opinion? I think I've said it a couple times during the stream, but ninety nine point nine 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 percent sure. I'm really like convinced. Anyway, I gotta go. See you in a bit. Thank you for tuning in. Also, um, if there's a if there's hundred and fifty people watching, if you uh have enjoyed the stream, feel free to just uh, uh like it if you haven't already. It's always uh, very much appreciated. I actually want to talk a bit about because uh, I haven't got round to this, um, so I thought I might as well. Uh, whilst we're here, uh, it, I'm very late to pie on this, and I have covered the major news from this interview. But uh, if you remember a while back, um, Russell T. Davis was at uh, Climate Creatives, um, uh, a BBC Academy interview, discussing uh, the way we view the climate in uh, the current TV landscape. And he made some interesting uh, sort of... Um, 
sort of declarations about the future of Doctor Who, if you like. Obviously, the most notable and the one that I covered was that Series 15 had indeed been confirmed to be under Russell, which was very exciting. But also, he just made some very interesting statements about the way he approached Doctor Who, not only in 2005, but also in 2022. And I know I'm a bit late to this, but I thought, you know what, might as well, might as well cover it. Why not? So, um, Doctor Who 2023, RTD on climate change and the modern audience. Uh, so this was posted, this is a cult box uh, interview, which basically collates, I love cult box, they're so useful. Um, without seeking to wish her away, Judy Wick's final story is coming very soon, The Power of the Doctor, uh, 23rd of October. However, we already know the show's future is secure. Russell D. Davis is returning as showrunner with the show being made by Bad Wolf, filming the 60th anniversary special has already taken place, with David Tennant and Catherine Tate somehow returning, and the new 14th Doctor Shooty Gower is waiting in the wings. So there was Climate Creators 2022 recently, as part of the BBC Academy's Climate Creators 2022 event, RTD was interviewed by the big corporation, uh, the big, by the corporation's chief content officer, Charlotte Moore. The talk centers on how television dramas can address climate change issues uh, the discussion begins with uh, 2019's uh, Pretty and Years and Years. The story uh, charted the lives of a family in the UK with their lives impacted by immigration, climate disasters, and the rise of chilling political regime, uh, which, loved by, which uh, loved by some, the show didn't attract a large audience. RTD considers it a learned experience. I love Years and Years. If you haven't seen Years and Years, seriously go watch it. I think it's that and it's a sin. Like, they're such strong pieces of work. And I think they make me all the more excited for his return, just because of how much he's still very clearly of a writer who is on it and just gets not only television, but is in touch with the cultural zeitgeist in a way that I don't think any other show ever has been. Um, he's so on top of things. Uh, yeah, Years and Years is a strong recommend for me. Um, obviously, great cast as well. Emma Thompson as, I guess, the leading... Um, I guess, uh, sort of antagonistic force within the show is absolutely phenomenal as well. Um, speaking about uh, television, uh, about the future of television drama, he suggests that today's children will be the ones to write compellingly about climate issues as is part of their daily lives. He also po promises the environmental issues will continue to feature in the new iteration of Doc 2, considering the Eccleston's era brand of futuristic optimism now sounds a little naive. I started Doctor Who when I was writing in 2004. I was worried that children and young audiences were always being told about death and destruction. Uh, I didn't want them going to school thinking I'm going to die, um, except his new Doctor Who scripts are uh, to contain a little more frankness. It's very interesting coming to Doctor Who now in 2022, where again, I want to provide optimism for that audience. And I mean, particularly like a six year old watching it. I want to write with optimism. I want to provide hope, but that speech seems hopelessly naive now. I think you have to be more detailed now. You have to be more honest to get away with that speech. Now, you've got to talk about it. You've got to say we're going to flood. You've got to say temperatures going up or you're letting us down hugely. In 2005, I was trying to care for the audience and look after them. Now I'm in the position where I have to listen to that audience because those viewers are very active. You know, those young viewers are very active. They're engaged with this. They're passionate. It's their world will be dead and gone. It's their world and it's and they're much more engaged. We live in an age in a vast fantasy culture. It's like the Lord of the Rings, it's Game of Thrones, it's Star Wars, Star Trek, it's everything. He goes on to discuss, he has a theory uh, that we're channel channeling our concerns about the planet into, apocaly uh, into apocalyptic dramas, saying we're challenging that anxiety to the fiction and not applying enough of that anxiety to the fact. Uh, a second season of RTD Doku, and then, yeah, it basically talks about the, the second season. Um... There are stories specifically looking into that, um, not all the time, uh, but it has to become part of the atmosphere of the show, because it's true, it's the way we're living in now, and I'm much more interested in trying to look at it. I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to season two, actually, which is how we ignore these things. Uh, tantalizingly, the conversation also alludes to the possibility of BBC's planning, possibly post-Doctor Who. He also talks about working on something which will absolutely stare this subject matter, Darren, uh, we can't talk about that yet, but it's something I'm, I'm proud of. Okay, yeah, that's... So, yeah, I wanted to talk about this because uh, I saw this, obviously, during the, the rounds for a while a while ago. And, um, it's a sim, more like it's a mid. Well, you have no taste. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I wanted to talk about this because um, I think he makes a very, very good point. And I think 
Russell just has such a, a wonderful understanding of like just how to how to make stories that are not only compelling for everyone, including young children, but also getting across points that need to be put across in such a way that feels that doesn't feel patronizing, that feels very, very appropriate. And I think I'm just really excited to see him tackle some of these issues facing modern day because you know, I think a lot of people forget as well, when it comes to Doctor Who in his first run, it was its first um, crack of the whip, so to speak. It was its first um, sort of attempt at being a show again since, like, the 1980s. So they kind of had to play to what the sort of general sort of consensus is were at the time you know they, they didn't want to rock the boat too much obviously you still very much have very politically charged stories within uh the 2005 era but obviously i think you know compared to something like years and years it looks somewhat quaint in comparison i think you can also just leave that up to people just being more socially aware generally um like i you know a lot of people you know pre-brexit and stuff you know didn't really discuss politics and then i feel like at least for me as a younger guy after that it was everywhere, and I think I think Russell's just going to be very good at tapping into all the right stuff. Um, and it's it's a very interesting interview, and and the stuff about um, I was going to say about what was the thing I was going to mention? I just completely lost my train of thought. Uh, um, yeah, I think he makes an interesting point, and I wanted to talk about this about um, we live in a world of vast fantasy culture. Because I think that's a key distinction that separates the climate in which, and I, I don't mean to use that as a um, uh, pun, but the climate in which the first era of his version of the show was versus RTD2. The first era, or you know, the first RTD era, Star Wars hadn't come back yet. Marvel wasn't a huge deal. Um... Game of Thrones wasn't a thing yet. I don't really know what was going on with Star Trek at the time. Um, obviously, there was still fantasy. Don't get it twisted. But we've come to a point now, I think, as a society where we're much more, um, much more enthralled by fantasy culture and much more accepting of it. So I think I could definitely see Russell embracing that more in his storylines going forward because, as this points out, he's very much in tune with what general the general um cultural zeitgeist is and i think he's going to if you know the rtd one era is the sort of gritty early 2000s um reboot yeah it had like futurama but what i'm saying is i don't think it didn't really have things like for example right you know marvel is arguably one of the most culturally ubiquitous franchises at least in the west and i think that has made even your most average Joe Schmo off the street, more accepting of these ideas that would, would have, even in the early 2000s, been seen as, like, more outlandish. You know, with a lot of early 2000s reboots of things, they were kind of, the approach taken was gritty, grungy reboot, sort of more serious tone. And I think, um, even though, you know, 2000, uh, at series one, whilst cheesy by modern standards, compared to its classic counterpart, was quite a, um, a more sort of um, grungy, 2000s, gritty aesthetic. I mean, look at the Night Doctor. But I mean, the reason I say this is if you look at it, um, you know, if you look at something like the way they the way they um, resurrected Batman in Batman Begins, um, comparing that to, you know, the, the Burton films, it's a lot more realistic, grounded... And that was kind of the, the climate that RTD was catering to at that point. Now, you know, we can have movies about, um, I'm trying to think, it's a, like the Eternals or like the Guardians of the Galaxy. No one knew who these guys were, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, people have become a lot more accepting of um, these, more, these more out there ideas, even more so than they were in the early 2000s, I would say. Obviously, it was still a big, you know, time for adult fantasy. But adult fantasy, it was more grounded, I think, in realism than it is now. Because um, that's what I would say anyway. Because, as I say, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have 
say for example, in the 2000s, you wouldn't have had something, I'm trying to think of a good example that kind of illustrates my point. You wouldn't have had something, I guess, like the recent Thor films in the early 2000s. They'd have been seen as too campy, too silly, um, and would, wouldn't have flown at the time. Whereas now I think we kind of accept more out there ideas. You know what I, I mean? Like more and tonally different stuff. iTunes leak, what's that? Mayo versus ketchup? Ketchup, probably, for most things. Although I probably have just as much mayo, but I feel like... Yeah. Um, what was... Someone said something about an iTunes leak. Terry, have you seen the iTunes leak? I just saw a tweet from Hoobie in Life. Uh, no. Should we have a look? Should we have a look? Do -do. I think I follow them, so... um. Oh, what? 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 Excuse me. Um, okay, hang on. I've just seen it posted. Let me see if I can get a better quality image of it. Why iTunes of all things? Hang on. Hang on. Where is it? So it was posted by Whovian Life. Has anyone got a link? Um, I think I saw it, but then maybe I was wrong. At you in it, Harry's. Okay, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I think I saw it, but I maybe didn't. Oh, yeah, this was what I thought, yeah. So, there's this. This is the... This is a leaked shot of Jodie Whittaker regenerating. This 180p shot on iTunes, of all things. But, look, you literally see the cliff and the water... You see the cliff. The cliff regeneration rumor was true. The cliff regeneration rumor was true. And this is almost definitely official. I mean, look at the TARDIS box. It's very unlikely to be a Photoshop. And it looks like we're getting the 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 yellow regeneration. Yeah. This is actually our first look at the regeneration by the looks of things. I don't know. I don't think it is. I You can't play it. It's just an image. I don't think it is. I don't think that is fake. I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't think it is. I don't think that is a, a fake. I'm going to be really honest with you. Check iTunes now, Tharys. Oh my god, it's so real. I think it's... Why I I don't know. The thing is, it might not be on UK iTunes. That's the thing. Can anyone see it on their iTunes? They do, but to be fair, I think iTunes images would also be low quality. I think that's legit. I'm a back back that now. I think that's legitimate. Oh, we've had some new images from BBC America as well, officially released. There we go. I've been doing great today. Look at me go. Um, yeah, we got this one, which we covered earlier. Um, this one of Yaz in the TARDIS. This one of Dan. This looks like him leaving. I think he's going to leave early on. And then we got this one of Vinda. So, yeah. I have nothing to say on Vinda. I'm going to be honest. If it weren't for the promotional images showing him in it, I'd forget. The lighting in these shots is good. Is that real? Is that image real? Did they really just... Did they really just... leak the regeneration shot? Why is Vinder in it? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. I keep coming back to it. Is it real? That looks real to me. Okay, okay, okay. Can I run a poll? Is that a thing I can do? In a live stream? I can. Uh, thank you to Marzo for the uh, £4.49 super chat. Are you ex uh, Yo, Thary's the Leak Master. Ooh, I like that name. The Leak Master. Are you excited for the 60th? Absolutely. friggin' lootly. I can't wait. I'm going to put a poll out. Hold on. I'm going to see if you guys can answer it. It's real. Do we know for definite? Um, I'm gonna, just going to type it out. Hold on. Bear with. Also, like the stream if you haven't already. There's 140 of you in here. 
um, is why would they upload it to iTunes before it aired? How would they even get a copy? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even know iTunes did um, visual things. To be honest, is it real? Yes, there are there are new photos. I think I just covered them. Yes, no. Ask your community. Um, bam. I did just look at the new photos, or are there more? Yeah, no, I did just cover those ones, but yeah, well, I'll cover them again because it kind of got lost in the shuffle a bit. Um, give me one sec. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so give me one sec, actually. I'm just going to quickly uh, mute for one second. I will be right back momentarily. If the screen goes black, it's just because I've gone away for a second. So don't be alarmed. Um, boop, boop. Goodbye. I'm back. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, I'm late. People are saying the photo is fake. Is it fake? Do we know? Some people are saying it's real. Some people. I, okay, so it's apparently the thumbnail for the 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 um the iTunes image, which makes sense. We've also had some new images from um wait, where's this from? The BBC America, just regular BBC America, not Doctor Who BBC America. This was from Doctor Who magazine. It's uh, thirteen Yaz, Ace, and Tegan. We have um, this one of Vinda seemingly in the TARDIS corridors, actually. That's an interesting one. Yeah, he seems to be in the TARDIS corridors in this one. And um, we have... Oh, let me have a look. This one, which we've seen of Jodie traipsing towards the TARDIS, which is in good quality now. And then this one again, which is her dropping them off. Yeah. Is it real? I think that's real. I'm going to be really honest. Master's fake TARDIS. The one she's trapeze. What, what, the one she's heading towards? No, I think that one's real. Because, uh, oh yeah, sorry if I got with it close, because it was how I was looking. Uh, what, the fake image? This one. Or the, or the fake image. The, the image. We don't know yet. The somewhat either real or fake image. I'm not sure which one. 
Um, this one, I don't know whether that is fake, to be honest. I don't, I don't know. Don't you have an iPhone, Thary? Check iTunes. Um, I do. Can you not check iTunes? I mean, yeah, I can. What would I look for? Power of the Doctor? Hang on. We're, we're doing the research here, folks. With my high, incredibly high-tech piece of technology, also known as a phone. But to be fair, that could just be a result of the low pixel count, to be fair. My phone actually won't turn on. There we are. Wait, is my phone dead? Um, I think my phone might be dead. I might just look on iTunes. Maybe it's on the American iTunes, to be fair. That's also a possibility. Yeah, because there's like the UK iTunes. Um, uh, I'd have to get it on Microsoft separately. Ah... Uh, there's no way of me confirming whether this is real or not. Uh, Tom, will you ever do a day in your life? American here, not on it. Okay, it might well be BS. That's pr it's probably BS then. It just looks so real. Like, it, it looks real enough. I feel like if it's not real, they've done a really good job. Thank you for these quality streams, there is No worries, no worries. Nah, I think it looks pretty real, I'm going to be honest. I mean, it probably is fake if there's, if there's no record of it. Oh, okay. Apparently... You need to buy the season pass. When you go to your purchased items, you will see the pictures. Okay, we're getting somewhere. According to this Twitter user, if you purchase the diamond pass on iTunes, you will be able to see the image. So has anyone got a diamond pass on iTunes? Because apparently that's what you need. To be fair, the... Um to be fair, the windows don't look straight in the tenant filming... So, I don't think that's a sign of a bad Photoshop. I think that's just kind of how the TARDIS windows are now. Um, I'm on iTunes now and it costs $9.99. Has anyone got $9.99? I, I might be able to do it, but I don't want to put my card details in on stream. Uh, your content has helped me pass the time until the episode ends. Well, I appreciate that. It's helped me as well. Diamond pass? I could barely pass wind. Okay, does anyone have a diamond pass? Okay, maybe I can maybe I can get a diamond pass, but then I have to. My phone isn't actually alive. Oh wait, now it is. Okay, my phone's word into life in my hour of need. I'm gonna I'm gonna find this image. Give them the tenor Thares. Someone donate Thares the money. <laughs> Hold on, but but I don't want to give Apple more money. But okay, fine. Hang on. iTunes. Thing is, imagine if it's not there now. I'm gonna. Could have wasted like iTunes store. Um, so how would I get premium? I don't know. Share me set up family sharing. I don't care about family sharing. What do I? What do I do? I feel like such a boomer. Get iTunes on your PC. Black out the screen again. No, I I refuse. Show the credit card details. Maybe it was quickly taken down. Maybe, but I don't even know how to, like, get the diamond pass if I wanted it. Like, normally they just have a big, like... Oh, hang on. Get one... For, is it Apple Music? Is that what I need? Diamond pass, isn't that it? Oh, I get it for free for one month. Let's go. Let's go. We're in. Wait, okay, power of the doctor, hold on. Uh, okay, that's what I need, okay. Hold on. So I search it on iTunes then. iTunes store, I guess. One second, everyone. 
we're gonna find it. Um, power. I didn't even know they did movies or TV. To be honest, I thought it was just music. Power of the Doctor. Power of the Daleks. Not quite. Ah, here we go. So what I need is the pass. Okay, it's done it. I've paid. Now give me the details. It looks too good to be fake. That's what I think. Hang on, I've paid everyone. Do you want to download the first episode? No. Give me the series pass details. Okay. Now what? I'm not seeing anything. It's not there anymore. Well, why didn't you tell me that? Actually, no. I, to be fair, it was... <laughs> okay. It's... For God's sake... I did not just spend 10 quid for no, for no reason. Oh wait, apparently there's more images. Okay, maybe I'll make up the, maybe I'll make it up to myself. Any someone super chat so I can can uh, get get rid of this loss, please. I've just I've just made a, a very bad financial Oh my god, it's real. Oh my god, it's actually Wait, is it not in my version? Why? I just paid for it. Come on. Please. Okay, well, it is real. It's confirmed that it's real. Mine only has the trailer. Uh, behind the scenes has the fucking regeneration shot in it. For God's sake. I can't believe that's real. Did I just waste 10 quid on nothing? Yeah, no, it's real. It's real. It's been confirmed to be real. And apparently there's new, real, proper images that aren't leaked. Why is it on iTunes? Why is the regeneration shot being leaked on iTunes? What the hell? <laughs> How has that happened? Oh, thank you, Cameron, for covering the loss. Thank you, Cameron. You never get this level of research on William Hill because she's not first. Damn right. I paid my money, granted it didn't get me anything, but there we are. But thank you, Cameron. I can't believe, on iTunes of all places, that's actually unbelievable. I can't believe it. What, what, the, what the hell? That's actually mad. Apparently there's more images as well. Is it from the t is it from the Black Archive Gallery? Hold on. Do apparently there's more images floating about Doctor Who, Whitaker specials, Power of the Doctor, uh, General, I guess. Okay, now that's not new. So it's stills, I guess. Oh, here we are. Here are the new images. Oh yeah, this site doesn't work for me without a, a VPN. Hold on. Ah, uh, um. Someone just tweet them out. Um, there's this one. I'll show this one. It's the master seemingly captured by unit. You see the TARDIS outside. Um, uh, there we are. We got... Hang on. I'll go on some more now. Do, do, do. Um, I think Ollie Link later. Once again, shout out to him. So yeah, there's this one where Ace and Tegan are looking at each other. Uh, 13's about to stroll in. And then there's this one of 13 and Yaz looking shocked by something going on on the planet as well. They're just dropping everything tonight, it seems. Uh, whether intentional or not. I just showed the leaked uh, regeneration image. Yay, cool regeneration real. Yeah, there it is. If you want to see it, there. It's real. I can't believe that was just on iTunes. That's actually, 
That's actually bad. I can't. I can't quite comprehend that. That that's just on iTunes, just there. Um, I'm a bit shocked by that. Yeah, it's it's real. It's real. It was on. It's been confirmed. It's been shown on iTunes. Um. If you don't believe it, then you can see it on the iTunes website here. It's real. Behind the scenes. I look behind the scenes of recording the centenary special, and you can see there, there's the image. It's real. This, this is like... <laughs> I'm just sort of... I'm sort of sat here like, how did this happen? Can you watch it? No, because... Um, uh, it's been taken down now, I believe. I, I can't press play. This is just an image of someone else's screen. But um, there's, it's not on my phone. I checked. They take it. They've taken it down since. Obviously, it was a minor. It was obviously a, a, a cock up that they quickly had to go. Ah, shit! They're not supposed to be able to see that yet. Sort of thing. I just can't believe it happened on iTunes or places. What's the top image? Um, that's just the uh, the main uh, power of the doctor sign. That one, yeah, that's a good point. That looks like some sort of snowy vista. And I guess the top image. I'm guessing you mean that one. Oop, hold on. My my connection timed out apparently. The apparently this one looks to be. I'm going to take a wild guess and say, given the snowy location, this is Russia. Given that we know that. Um, Rasputin and um, the Tsar Nicholas II and the Empress of Russia are going to be big prominent features in this episode. I'm going to guess this is Russia. And then we've got this, which is the regeneration shot. I just can't get over the fact that it's on iTunes. Like, does this mean there is your world exclusive of the image on a YouTube channel? I mean, technically, I guess. I feel like I'm the only YouTuber who's covered this so far. Um... Kind of unintentionally, but subscribe if you're new, if you want to see more Doctor Who content live, I guess, or not live, you know, just in general. Um, feel free to subscribe, it's it's really appreciated. This is the No Way Home leaks all over again. Yeah, it's definitely that energy, isn't it? Oh, this is a new... Oh, God, there's more new images. Okay, so there's this one of... Oh, this one looks sick. It's Ashad with old Cybermen. Okay, that's a cool image. I really like this Cybermen design. Actually, do they look a bit slimmer? Or is it just me? Do they look a bit more sleek? Or is it just me? Maybe they're exactly the same and it's just my eyes deceiving me, but they look a bit... slimmer. Also, like the stream if you're enjoying it. Um... And then, yeah, we got a proper good, high-quality image of the one we saw earlier, as well as the one I showed earlier, which was the Master being captured by Unit with the TARDIS in the background. So, yeah. Beat on a diet. Yeah, they look a bit... It looks like they've, they've slimmed down the design a bit. A bit taller, perhaps? Yeah, perhaps. That one, uh, that Black Archive website never seems to work for me, annoyingly. Um... Oh god, this is another one, apparently. Oh god, they're just releasing every image. <laughs> Alright. Every image just gets released tonight, I guess. Um, didn't know it was Doctor Who's equivalent to Christmas, so they're just going to start dropping things at random. Um, Bum, 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 bum. The leaks are wild. They go. Brr. Yeah, it's it's kind of wild that that's happened. I can't even lie. I assume you've seen the Apple regen leak. Yeah, we just kept, we just saw it. They're making goddamn telly snap reconstruction before it airs. Yeah, it's so weird. This is what I'm trying to say though. It's so weird to go from like last week or like a few weeks ago where there was like nothing for months, and then all of a sudden they just like start 
And I'm not even just talking about the Apple leak, I'm just talking about the official stuff. They just start do 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 start like officially dropping every image that they have. Like it's mental. Okay, there's there's more images apparently. There's this one of Jody on the bullet train in the beginning of the episode. <laughs> um there's that one of the master that we've seen, that one of the Cybermen that we've seen, and that one of, of uh, Yaz and the Doctor that we've seen. How are there so many? Like, every time I refresh Twitter, there's a new one. Can you refund things on iTunes? Because I feel a little bit cheated. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to Google how to get a refund on iTunes. How to get a refund on iTunes. Request refund. Choose the reason why you'd like to refund and then click next. Uh, report a problem .apple .com. Okay. Um, I'll, maybe I'll do it after the stream. <laughs> you can get a refund. Nice. I'm going to do that because I only did it. Also, thank you for the Mo to, to Moazo9 for the uh, £4.49 super chat saying, do you mean New Year because they stopped doing the Christmas special throughout the Chippewa era? What do you, what, um, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean New Year? Sorry, I, I got out of the loop on that. Um, wait, did you actually see it on yours or someone else's? Could be photoshopped. Nah, it's not photoshopped. It's real. DX Guitar Master, it's real. There's like no way it's been photoshopped by that many people. I didn't see it because it had been taken down by the time I got to it. The problem he reports, you didn't leak a photo to me. <laughs> Actually, um, I bought your product in the expectation that I was going to get some exclusive uh, details, and I didn't. Uh, did you buy it to check if it was real? I didn't, and apparently it gotten taken down by the time I had. So, uh, I feel ch Oh my god, there's another new image. This one of Kate Stewart. Are they just releasing every frame of the episode? <laughs> like, what? I'm just... I'm so confused. And then there's that one of, of uh, Ace and Tegan that we've already seen. There's literally just... Oh my god, no, I've just realised. BBC America referred to Power of the Dalek, not Power of the Doctor. I didn't even see that. That's hilarious. Was anyone able to watch it on iTunes? No, because the episode itself wasn't up. What that was the th thumbnail for was the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the behind the scenes extras features thing. The intern gets bored and just starts releasing 60 of stuff. Yeah, it's so weird. We've gone from like nothing to just, okay, there's, now there's just another one. Okay, what? There's this one of the master is Rasputin now. Um, where are they all coming from? I know that there was a Black Archives thing, but, like, they weren't all on that website a second ago. Is it TV Zone? Because they did tease something. Is it TV Zone? Hang on, I'm going to check TV Zone's Twitter. TV Zone. Because they did tease something. Uh, okay, well, they've apparently got an embargo, but the content's already out. <laughs> Um, nice. Um, so yeah, I guess that they've just decided to... Re I'm guessing what's happened, right? Okay, if I can put my conspiracy theorist hat on for a second, I would say that these... these uh, the Obviously, the regeneration iTunes one aside, I'm assuming what's happened is... They were going to release these images periodically throughout the rest of the week, but they've somehow either leaked or a website's gotten their, like, hands on them early, and now we have all of them, um, like, early. That's my guess. That's my guess as to what's, why, why this is happening. Um, I, I, I think that makes sense, right? Like, yeah, also, if you're new, feel free to subscribe. That would be very much appreciated. Oh my god, there's more, are there? Seriously? I think I might have just... 
So wait, the, did the iTunes thing can like was multiple things leaked or was it just? I think I just covered most of them. Yeah, I've covered most of them. Reverse clue, but whatever. I think the you want about the Rasputin one. I did see that one. Unless you're on about another one that I haven't seen. Um, let me have another look, though. Just to be sure. Yeah, no, I've seen that one. That's the Rasputin one. I showed that one earlier. Why, where are these? So something's definitely gone on, then. Oh, my God. David Tennant image scene. Now, don't say that. Don't, don't spam that unless that's legit. Don't, don't do my heart like that. <laughs> I don't think I can take it. Dr. Marketing Team, I was joking when I said you were making a tally snap reconstruction. David in Jody's costume. Right. You better not be joking. I think you might. You're probably joking, aren't you? It's only one person saying it. I know you said it like three times, but I don't know whether I can believe that. I don't know. I just don't want my heart broken. I don't know. I think they might be joking. I don't want to get everyone's hopes up if it's not there. Including my own. Oh, there's more images of Power of the Doctor. This on the bullet train. We see here the bullet train staff. Um, with the laser pistols. Oh, there's some cool laser pistols. They're cool. Um, some cyber... Oh, so this is interesting. So this is a Cyberman with the Gallifrey and insignia. Gotta be honest. Without the headdress, it looks really cool. I can't lie. And then a uh, better quality version of that image of Jodie. Uh, sort of uh, stalking the bullet train, I guess. I, I'm not seeing anything about Tenant, so I think that might have been some BS. Shakespeare, oh my god, he's there. What? Where? He's not on my Twitter. Can someone DM me it if he's there? If he's not there, but like multiple people are now saying he's there. He's in Jody's clothes. Wait, multiple of you are now saying it. I feel like I'm being gaslit. Is it real? I can't find it. Help me. Right, Adzinko, if you've seen it, can you DM it to me? Because I cannot find that one, but I want to see it. Check Twitter at Wait, you added me on Twitter? It's just the image that we've already seen. That's just Jody. What do you mean? There's, there's nothing new here. Yeah, no, I feel like this feel like this is BS. This is the this is the leak regeneration image, but I'm seeing no talent at all. Uh, so I think that might have been. Yeah, no, they're joking. They're joking. They're joking. Everyone, false alarm. <laughs> but no, there is actually a regeneration image leak, which I covered earlier. Um, why does this um? Why does this website never properly work on my computer? It's very annoying. Yeah, it's all on the gallery site. Oh, okay, they're episode stills. That makes sense. Yeah, so they're all on that gallery place. I think we've gone through most of them now anyway. Um, unless I've missed one, which I don't think I have. But yeah, no, that is all of them. Um, if for some reason that website, my computer doesn't like that website. Darry's next Doctor trailer. Yeah, now, now the joke is dead, guys. You just DM me the Tenant League on Twitter. Yeah, no, great. Good, good one. Good one. No, I, I knew that wasn't. And you, like, the thing is, like, the entire chat gaslit me into believing that it was there. And I was like, it's not there. It's, it's not. 
I feel like I feel like I've just been. I mean, to be fair, John Bishop is looking kind of ripped in this special. Can't lie. I don't think that's a leak. I think that's just a fact. We found All right. Well. Yeah, that was something. Is there anything more? I don't think there is. I think we covered everything. What an eventful day. Tetheris do be getting gaslit gatekeep gale boss. Refresh. I think I covered it all. I covered the Rasputin images, the Cyberman images. The the nice quality Dalek image, the Dan image. I've covered all these images. I've covered them all. But that 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 cliff top that that confirms a cliff top regenerations. So uh, yeah, like that's basically a lot of the rumors now are starting to like ring true. Like that whole cliff top regeneration is basically true now. All right, well, um, that's wild. Um, yeah, hold on, give me one sec. I'm just going to pause the stream for one second again. Uh, actually, what time is it? I might head off for a bit. Uh, let me, I'll give you, I'll give you one second and I'll let you know. Um, I'll be right back. Just give me one sec. So I was trying to come back then and it, it uh, broke for a sec. Sorry about that. There we are. I am back. Hello. Do, do, do. Um, hold on. Um, I'm going to head off, but thank you all. This has been a very weird stream, very all over the place, but thank you all for tuning in. And I'm going to see you in a bit. Sorry, that was a random ending. I'm just... Um, yeah, I'm going to head out. But thank you. Love Cherry Bakewells. I do too, good sir. I will see you in a bit for the next stream and more chaos. Um, thank you all for watching and goodbye.